Hi guys, uh, Greg Stonewalker here from Endura. Just wanted to go over a quick little training video with you talking about the Endura wall system. So we're going to start off by understanding that there's three major components within this system. The first one is our patented concrete block. This one, uh, as you can see, has a very unique kind of pattern within it. Uh, it doesn't have any direct thermal path from outside to inside. So it has the webbing here as well as here. How that works is when the heat or the cold hits the outside, it works as a system and it transfers all the heat or the cold through this entire system before it ever makes it through then to the inside, then finally to the inside uh, of the actual building. So it takes a long time for that pathway to go. So that's the first component of the system. The second one is our uh, foam inserts. So these foam inserts, as you are building the house, you insert these with this large one on the outside, always on the outside wall. And then you have these smaller inserts that go in on the inside component. Here. As you can see, when we insert the mod, it creates an overlap so that there is no direct path for any heat or cold to actually go through. We always have some layer of insulation throughout the system. The third component to this is actually the surface bonding. The surface bonding is a proprietary material that actually chemically binds to the concrete block. It's a very similar coefficient. So once it actually drives, it creates a crystalline bond with the block. So you no longer chip this off. This, this part doesn't chip off. You'd actually have to break the block to get this off. What that does is it creates kind of a Kevlar vest over the entire system. It locks it all together, and that's where we kind of create some of the advantages of waterproofing, uh, fireproofing, or four-hour fire resistance, um, as well as uh, bug and rodent resistance, and um, air penetration, as well as sound. Everything kind of working together to lock it all in. You no longer have a block system or a block wall. You have now a solid concrete wall. Those three kind of components are the main aspect of the Endura wall system. The next thing I want to talk about is just a little bit more of the detail. The big component is that there is, it is a dry stack engineered system. So when we're looking at engineering, we need to have that uh, engineer kind of come in and, and allocate some of the things uh, depending on the size, but it's all been engineered so that it's actually dry stack. So as you can see, there is no mortar that is between the blocks going down. What this does, when we actually put mortar in block systems, that's kind of the weak point because it's not the same coefficient of concrete as the concrete block. So you can see a lot of the concrete walls, or the block walls, sorry, they actually have cracks along those joints. We remove that, which now makes a nice solid kind of bond with the blocks going down in the system. What we do here is when we're looking at a residential home, we actually have the concrete footings poured, rebar that comes up, and these blocks are stacked right on the footings, right down in, and you can use it from down the footings through the basement all the way up to the trusses that go across for the roof. And we'll show you kind of how that component as we move around this wall. So now we have a dry stack system. Okay? The foam inserts are all in there. Okay? We also have what's called a bond beam. So you can kind of see the rebar coming both horizontally as well as vertically throughout the system. So depending on the structure, uh, we typically do about every four feet um, vertically and then four feet coming up horizontally as well. Some other applications might require a two foot uh, vertical, but that's when we're looking at a lot taller, taller wall structures. So what happens on these bond beams is we remove some of the foam inserts on the inside. So we remove all of the foam inserts on the horizontal and then down in the vertical area as well. Once that happens, every four feet, we lay the rebar in there, as well as bringing up the rebar vertically right from the footings, and we pour concrete or grout down in there that solidifies and, and locks the entire system in together. So as you can see, the entire house will now have these bond beams that all lock in together, both vertically and horizontally, with the dry stack system, and then finally the surface bonding all on the outside as well as on the inside to lock it all together okay um, so come with me around this one well let me let me quickly say around this outside this surface bonding is now your scratch coat or your brown coat 
right? You can apply stucco, acrylic, whatever you want to, rock, whatever type of um, brick as well, type of siding that you want on your house goes strictly onto this one. So allows, right, the, uh, um, the trades to put it right on instantly after, which speeds up and reduce costs uh, with, its, with this system. As we come around on the inside here, you can kind of see a little bit more of how the structure stacks. Of course, it's all staggered throughout that to kind of give it a little bit more structure, um, just how that system works. And then you can kind of see now the long beams of the concrete going through here. When we look at it, it actually does have some breakage of, there's no foam in some of these areas. However, remember this system, right, is a system. It works all together, right? This works all together so the outside has to be completely heat it up before it slowly transfers to this side. So you're not going to get a, a really cold spot right in there just because there's not as much insulation. It works together completely as a system. So as we come around the inside, you can kind of see now that we have that surface on the, on the outside, which is a scratch coat. We also have it on the inside. Now we do an extra coat and an extra time or a pass on that just to smooth it out a little bit more. You can see that's a very, very smooth coat on the inside. We then cover it with a just a thin skim coat of drywall mud just to make it extra smooth. Um, or we can add texture to that at that time depending on what the uh, customer wants. Um, we have that thin set, then we can paint it right there. The number one question that I got for a long time is how do you hang pictures? Right? We'll bring that up right now. As you're looking at this, you can use the sticky 3M tabs or you can just drill a hole and put a nail right in there. Um, it's just the difference between our understanding of using concrete screws um, or pilot holes rather than wood screws as we move forward. But the best thing about that that I've ever found is you no longer have to find a stud. So you can hang whatever you want, wherever you want, and you never have to find a stud again on those exterior walls. So that is the complete um, look or finish of the inside. You can see that um, molding and, and um, all around here, uh, trim, everything works together, very similar. Uh, what we use is some form of PL or liquid nails that actually glue this stuff on. Holds it a lot better, um, it's a lot stronger of a bond um, than actually brad nailing it throughout the, throughout the home. Looks just the same, same way to insert on your windows. They come in, insert just the same, but you use concrete screws, pilot them through as well as then you finish them off putting them in. Capcoms are a, a brand that you can use, or there's a lot of other different brands you can kind of put on there as well. Same type of finish on the inside, a wood um, or a uh, drywall type of sill that you finish off very nicely, very similar um, to any other kind of construction. Right? Um, as you're going through this, you can kind of see when you come into the basement, right? you come right off the footings, you come right up, and you continue to come up past where the floor would go. We then put this ledger plate on there. You bolt it actually into that first layer of, of block and concrete. You bolt it in as it kind of goes across. You put then hangers down here and you lay the joists right in those hangers. Once the joists are in there, you sheet the floor, everything's done there, and you continue to work off that surface so it's a lot safer for the trade as you move up and build the rest of the house. The other big kind of component um, is electrical. As you can see, there is electrical outlet down there. Um, as you are building it, you understand where you put your boxes. You cut out as you build the block. You cut out a little area and you slide in your electrical box. And then you run a plastic conduit, right? Or a metal conduit uh, up through the entire wall. And so once it's done, the electrician just takes the wire, feeds it down into that conduit, ties it all in at the end everything works really, really well. Okay. Um, as you move up, you can kind of see over here you have an interior wall. So the interior walls are still going to be a stick belt. And as you can see, you pilot them and you drill them right in um, to that concrete block. And we typically put some form of uh, vapor barrier poly in between to make that um, uh, no transfer of any, uh, any type of humidity or any water that might be on the inside or outside. A man to follow kind of code in there. As those things walk in there, you can build them off, everything's fine, they actually work really, really well and nice and solid. Other key components that I wanted to show you is once you're up at the very top height, 
Um, depending on some of the areas, you can always pour a little bit extra concrete on the top, at the very top, so to make sure that you're exactly on the right height that works with um, uh, what the architect or the engineer has decided, or what the homeowner might decide want a little bit higher uh, of a um, first story floor. Um, if you can look at this as we go up here, um, you end off on the top, which is a bond beam. We actually put these things in, which are called meta tags or hurricane straps. They anchor right into the concrete as you pour. You put your truss right next to them as you go along the roof, as the truss moves. Once these are on there, you actually fold this over, bend it around the truss, and then you tack it all in, lock it all in, so now um, your roof's not moving anywhere. It's, everything's locked in. It's been built for hurricanes um, and tested in uh, for hurricane and tornado rating for this stuff. Okay. Um, the last big component is understanding that some of the wall uh, in the corner are a little bit different, some of the blocks. Um, they are a corner piece, which now uh, has concrete right down in the corner all the way down to the basement. And you have your two rebar, or a, a, a one number five coming up, or a 15 mil coming up all throughout that corner uh, section that really locks in that corner. And then you build off of that, straighten the house out and move forward. Um, other than that, um, I think we've covered most of it. On the outside, once again, uh, you can apply any type of uh, siding or stucco uh, and rock veneers on there. On the inside, once again, it's painting. Uh, once you actually put that coating in there. I just want to talk to you quickly about insulation and R value. <clears throat> when we're looking at our system, there's different ways to kind of look at R value where it's like the static calculation as well as a thermal dynamic use and how it actually uh, reacts or uh, performs in a real life situation. When we're looking at this, our system uh, comes in at an R32 to a 54 value. Uh, where that kind of comes in is the actual uh, compressive strength as well as the insulation factor and the bond beams that go in there work together as a system to spread out or diffuse the heat and the cold and with the patented block design uh, minimizes or does not allow that transfer of heat or cold in through the entire wall system. That kind of allows us to kind of have that R value um, with the strength as well as that thermodynamics um, when it works in there, we have about a 70%, about a 50% to a 70% energy savings depending on the size of home and what you're actually using within that. I wanted to quickly talk to you about the advantages of the Enduro wall system. There's a number of different advantages over a, a number of different traditional type of building uh, materials that I wanted to bring up. Um, one of the first ones, the most important that I find is our four hour fire rating. So with our four hour fire rating, that's the highest rating that anyone will give you, even if your, our system will last a lot longer than that. Um, but that four hour fire rating is used in a number of different components through building multi um, unit buildings, as well as break, doing those firewalls within those units. Um, with the fire rating, what we found is as we were doing the testing, it got to 3000 degrees uh, on one of the sides of the walls and it never got more than 300 degrees on the other side. So with our thermal dynamic, the way that the system works, the transfer of that heat um, took longer than four hours to make it on the inside as well as dispersed it throughout it. Um, so it gives me a great confidence in knowing that we have that four hour fire rate. The other big component is um, the seismic and the way that it's actually engineered and built. It gives not only longevity, uh, with it, durability, um, but it also is hurricane and tornado rated. Um, that comes from the compressive strength of having the block dry stacked on top of each other with the bond beams and then locked in at the very end with our surface bonding that brings it all together. That surface bonding now also creates a number of different layers or a number of different advantages for the Enduro wall system. The first one will actually be the waterproofing. This system, right, once the surface bonding is on there, it actually makes it completely waterproof, watertight throughout the entire structure. Um, as it goes down, we also put it down on the footings so that we can lock in all the water, um, or sorry, lock out all the water as we're actually moving through that. With that watertight, it also brings in airtight. 
And so we don't have a lot of that air moving throughout a traditional stick built building. Um, that brings in uh, moisture, uh, which creates mold and rot, um, as well as some of the dust and other particles in there that deter or hinder the R value of some of those other type of structures. With this one, it is rodent, vermin, vermin termite um, proof. Um, they don't get in there, they don't eat any of this stuff, um, as well as uh, it, that airtight allows it to be very uh, um, long term and durable throughout the number of years. Um, we also, to create or to show the strength of the actual system and the surface bonding, what we did is we created uh, or did a test with a ballistic test showing on the strength of it. And with that one, our ballistic testing allows us to um, show that there was very, zero, very little or zero penetration from a number of different uh, uh, tests that we did um, uh, within that ballistic test.